It's another nice day to be driving around in the silver car. Today I'm gonna do an upgrade to the fuel injectors. So the car's running fine, but ever since driving Ken's car, he has the 5.0 Motorsport injectors and it was ultra smooth. So I'm looking for uh, the same feel that Ken has because I really enjoyed his kind of low speed smoothness that that car had. If I run this car like maybe first gear, second gear at about 1500 RPM, there's just a little bit of roughness to it. Um, I think it could be better. At least Ken's car was better. So uh, I'm gonna swap the injectors out and see if it makes a difference. Now I'm also running around with this gauge plugged in. And if you're not familiar with these gauges, the, this is um, air fuel ratio gauge. Any high numbers mean lean. Anything over 14.7 is lean. Anything under 14.7 is rich. Max power occurs somewhere between 12.8 and 13.2. Right at the spot where it starts to get a little, you know, shuddery, the fuel ratio is right where it should be, 14.2, 14.3. And it does smooth out when you get over 3,000 RPM. It's really smooth at that point. But that low speed drivability, it's not an air fuel ratio. I think it's just the way the injectors operate. And these could be getting tired. You know, these are the original injectors. So I'm just warming the engine up. I'm gonna do some wide open throttle runs and document the air fuel ratio at wide open throttle because when we swap it out with the new ones we want to make sure that it's in the same wide open throttle range that's where you can uh, damage your engine so this will be a baseline test before the injector swap see what kind of air fuel ratios we're running at wide open throttle so nobody really understands exactly how the motronic efi system works but I think we have some clues that it is a closed loop system. It does depend on the O2 sensor to keep it within a certain air fuel range. So at part throttle, it always likes to be around 14.7. That gives you the best fuel economy and the best emissions. But when you go higher RPMs or full throttle operation, it goes out of closed loop mode and it just goes into a pre-programmed map of a lower air fuel ratio at wide open throttle it's gonna kind of protect itself it's gonna run rich probably in the 12 um, air fuel ratio range and that not only keeps the combustion temperatures down but it also prevents it from detonating and so forth so it's it's really not necessarily for the most power but if you're running on the autobahn for long periods of time the pro the, the engine is programmed to run rich so at least that's how I think it works. It's a very proprietary system. It's difficult to uh, hack in and, and get the data out of it. Each time I do it, um, just looking at it myself, I'm getting around anywhere between 12.1 and 12.5. Something like that, it's uh, pretty rich. Especially over four grand, it dips down into the low 12s for sure. I'm gonna do the driver's side injectors first. And so I've removed this pipe. This is always in the way. I've also loosened this connector bracket because the stuff we need to get to is right behind there. We need to get some rags underneath here because we're gonna get some fuel spillage. I'll break this side loose first. Hopefully it'll catch most of the fuel but it's going to be messy. I'll put a drain pan underneath too.
So the fuel well is now loose, but the injectors are still clipped in. So these clips right here mechanically hold the injector in, and then this clip holds the connector on. So we're gonna push those off and disconnect the electrical leads and also the mechanical leads, and then the injectors should be free. Yeah, the fuel rail's out and the injectors are out. So I'm gonna show you the new ones and we'll go ahead and put them in, just reverse of removal. So the green one is the 5.0 Motorsport one and the other is the original. So they're exact same form factor, exact same connectors. They're just new components inside, new electronics. So I am gonna use a little rubber grease on the O-rings and we'll just put them right back in. And then unrelated to the fuel injectors, I am going to retorque the intake manifold. So there's that hex nut right there. There's another one and another one. So there are six on each side. So they're a little difficult to get to. I may take this plastic piece off to get in there, but I have some, some tools that I might be able to just fish in there and go ahead and torque these back down, make sure they're not loose. These commonly come loose because there's thermal insulators underneath there and they can take a set and just over all the heat cycles, things start to get loose. Once that becomes loose, the, uh, the gaskets can fail. So you wanna make sure you have good clamping pressure on the gaskets at all times. Also, no vacuum leaks here. None of those bolts or nuts were loose, but I just used a bunch of crazy extensions and swivels and stuff. And I was able to check the tightness of all those. I at most gave it like a 16th of a turn. So they're all pretty tight. Hey, this side's done. Uh, nothing's bent or twisted or tweaked or anything. I'll uh, start it up, check for leaks, but um, I think this side's good. I got the bracket reattached to the manifold. I got zip ties, new zip ties installed on the fuel rails. You don't want these bouncing around. So as secure as they can be, the, the less stress it is on the wire. Um, so yeah, three out of six done. And now for this side, uh, it looks a little bit harder to get to, but we're gonna have to take the air box off or at least the cover off. This is a pain to attach, but uh, we've got to take it off. It looks like we're gonna have enough access to get to the fuel rail connections. That's the fuel pressure damper right there. So we can get that nut off and this one off. We can take that fuel rail off and replace the injectors. Luckily, this engine does not have the AC compressor installed. It normally goes right there. That would have to be removed as well. I am gonna put my AC compressor back on. I just haven't gotten to it yet. These are the AC lines that are just taped off all those lines are gonna get replaced.
I know what you guys really want to see, which is me put this uh, air cleaner back in. This assembly is super difficult to install. And if you look carefully, there is a long zip tie on the upper latch. That's the one that's hard to get to. And the zip tie is the only way you can basically put this thing in. It's gonna be a big help not having the AC condenser here once again. I've done it with the AC condenser attached. It's, it's really difficult, but uh, yeah. So let me put the camera up and I'll show you how I do it. Basically, I put the rear ones in first and then save these front ones for last. Okay, I think I got it on there. It's, you never really know. It's very hard to reach that upper one. This foam pad, which is new, makes it also hard. You gotta basically reach behind there. This thing always cuts you in the arm. It's really a pain. So once it's in, we just leave it in. Don't need to change that air filter very often. The engine's still warming up and it's in the 13s. That's perfect for cold start. Once the engine warms up, the idle will come down to about 800. Okay, I'm not even a half a mile from my house already and I can already see that it's, it is running smoother. It's very nice. Okay, so park throttle cruising, it's about, you know, right in the closed loop mode, which is 14.7, 14.5, it's, it's right there. I just did a real quick full throttle too. We'll do it again here from about 3,000 and up. I'm in third gear, so let's do it. It's about the same, 12.2 on average. Anywhere between 12.8 and 12.0. So it does bounce around some, which is normal, but it, it's got about the same AFR ratios as the original, which is great. Definitely on the safe side. If anything, it actually feels just a little bit more responsive in the mid-range. It's, uh, it's very quick to respond. Throttle response might be just a little bit better, actually. It just, it feels really good. I'm a big fan of these injectors already. Ken's car still has a little bit more smoothness, but they're almost the same now. I think some of it might have to do with the uh, motor mounts, actually, because Cabriolets have a different type of motor mount and the rubber is slightly different. The, the rubber in the cabriolet is a little bit firmer. But I'm liking this. So the oil is, this is about as warm as it gets on a day like today. It's like 70 degrees outside. Oil pressure is a little over one, uh, which means the oil is pretty hot. And the RPM is like rock steady super steady it's um you know got a little bit of rumble to it just in the feel of, a, of the seat of the pants here but it's not obnoxious and it does feel slightly smoother than before overall i'm really pleased with these injectors the full throttle performance which i was worried about you just anytime you change something on your car you want to make sure you're not going to damage it 
So keeping the air fuel ratios in the same band under wide open throttle was to me the, the most important thing. The closed loop works great. It keeps it just like it did before. Um, and then that, that wide open throttle map, like I said, holds it in between like low 12s. That's, that's, it can't really do any better than that. So these are a direct replacement. It just has like a little bit smoother response and it has a little smoother idle. When injectors die, they typically die like at idle and part throttle response. They just get lazy, they get sticky or they're dripping and the computer can only do so much. It doesn't have control of each individual cylinder. It basically takes the O2 sensor and averages everything together. So if one injector is lazy, it can cause some imbalance in the way the engine runs. Even though the target air, air fuel ratio is correct, it may not be correct for every cylinder. So it's really important to have a matched set of injectors that are new. And that's what these offer. So thumbs up to 5.0 Motorsports. Um, I'll put a link in the description below um, for eBay. I bought mine on eBay and um, that's probably the best price you can get on them. They're not cheap, but I think it's worth it. Cheers, guys. See you next week.